and this is the main drawback here in the review for both of them. I don't know how Scott designed their uh, lasts, but... Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex. Today we have a brand that we never reviewed on the channel but which has always been around here. It's the brand of my bike which is here my TT bike Scott. Scott very kindly sent me uh, two pairs of shoes. The Scott Speed Carbon RC their top and racing shoe and the Scott Pursuit their sort of trainer tempo shoe. Uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, or even daily trainer, welcome back to that. But thanks to Scott Belgium for sending me uh, these two shoes. I'm reviewing them together because they have many things in common and many differences. I think it makes sense to have a common review, some comparisons between them. And then if need be, we can have a follow-up, you know, dedicated uh, video for one or the other. But here you have it, it's a joint review. I think it's the first time we do this on the channel. Let's start with the specs. So we're looking at 280 grams in my size US 11 EU 45 on the Speed Carbon RC, 270 on the Pursuit. Quite funny because the uh, racer, the Speed Carbon RC, is listed as being lighter than the Pursuit on Scott's website. I checked on, you know, both shoes right, left, and I have 10 grams more on this one. Is it an inconsistency because it's a sample pair? Is it how it is, you know, uh, for all the pairs out there? I don't know, I haven't checked any other review yet, but you know, if you have the two shoes and if you can compare the weights, I'm very interested in that. Width of the platform, we're looking at something slightly wider on the Pursuit, on the trainer. It's something like two millimeters more in the forefoot, five in the, in the midfoot and four in the heel, but you have the numbers on your screen. I'm also trying to leave them a bit longer. Someone asked, uh, you know, in the comments to leave them a bit longer on the screen so you can check them and actually read them. So you should have them a bit longer on your screen. Drop, we're looking at five millimeters drop on this one, 30 in the heel, 25 in the forefoot. It feels more like 20, you know, 33, 28, more than, than the 30 uh, Scott claims here in the heel. All the brands have different systems to measure their stack height and to, uh, to share them with the consumers. Maybe Scott is not counting the insert insole. I don't know how, how it's done, but it feels more than, than 30 and it feels a bit more like, I think you have as a comparison now on your screen, uh, I chose the Nova Blast for this one and a comparison for the Pursuit with eight millimeters, 30 in the heel, 22 in the forefoot. I think I picked the artist. Anyways, I picked some shoes that I think are relevant to compare to these in terms of stack height. And for both of them, it feels like a bit more midsole, uh, a bit more of a shoe under, under the heel, under the forefoot. Last but not least, Durometer scores and uh, very interesting. So both shoes are coming with the Kinetic Light midsole from Scott. It's an EVA plus olive vegan block compound, you know, combo. Uh, blend, if you will. We had that on the Nova Blast, on the Salomon s -Lab Pulsar, on the Helion midsole of the On Cloud Boom Eco and Cloud Stratus last year. Many shoes with EVA plus olefin block compound. I quite like that blend, to be honest. And here we have it in a dual density type of combo here on the Speed Carbon RC and in one single compound, one single, you know, flavor of the Kinetic Light midsole here. The scores are very interesting because they are quite high compared to what we used to here on the channel. So we have two layers, bottom and, and, and top layer here on the Speed Carbon RC. The top layer, I believe, is the firmest at 49 on the geometer scale. And the bottom one is at 40 on the geometer scale, ranging from zero, super soft to 100, super firm. And this is a bit more than, than many shoes that we are reviewing. Many super shoes are more in the low 30s, high 20s. And it correlates quite well to the ride, which is a firmer ride. It's not one of the very soft rides out there. So if you're interested in a firmer ride, uh, here you have it. And the flavor of Kinetic Light on this one corresponds, I believe, to the lower um, bottom layer here. So 40 on the 41 on the Jurometer scale. You have it on your screen. 
The outsoles are very similar. I believe they're the exact same compound other than the name, which is the same, but I believe the compound is also the same and it's around 68, 70, which is also quite firm for um, an outsole, but this, this predicts a good durability. So key differences, as you can see on the footage that you have on your screen, the uppers are quite different. This is on the Speed Carbon RC, a much more lighter, thinner, uh, pliable upper, race day type of upper. It's comfortable and it comes with a very clever semi-gusseted tongue, which the Pursuit does not have. And I believe this would be a nice addition to the Pursuit to have a gusseted or semi-gusseted tongue. The RC, uh, the Speed Carbon RC, sorry, has it. And it works well with that very, very thin, very pliable, very flexible upper. The, the laces are nice on both shoes. And one of the key differences as well is, of course, the plushness, the comfort, and, um, you know, all the extra material that you have here in the heel on the Pursuit. Lots of it, and you have a very comfortable daily trainer type of type of um, sensation. And here you have something much more, you know, straightforward. No big padding, just some some bolsters running uh, around your ankle. That tab, which I'm not a huge fan of, because I don't really see the purpose of it here, at least on the side. Yeah, the the two shoes run true to size, which is a good thing as such, but. And this is the main drawback here in the review for both of them. I don't know how Scott designed their uh, lasts, but the heel lockdown is really poor on both shoes. It can work for some people. So, you know, this is not the drawback for everyone. And as always, the shoes are not good or bad. They just suit some purposes. They, they work for some needs, for some preferences. People with maybe, you know, swollen ankles, a bit wider feet, or just that prefer to have a looser type of experience in their rides they will be better off with um, these shoes compared to other brands, other models. For me, the lockdown is not a killer, but not too far from it. I didn't have a good experience. I tried, you know, runner's knots, lacing different, different ways, putting more tension. It didn't really improve it. So lockdown here is an issue for me. And that sums it up for the upper. Very quickly, let's look at the inserts. And that's quite interesting on the trainer. So the Pursuit, you have an Ortolite insert, which is a bit thicker. It adds a bit of cushion. And you know how much I am a believer of the power of insoles, the power of inserts. Here you have an extra, an extra cushion and you know, it helps for the for the ride of the shoe. Welcome back to that. Scott calls the the insert on the um, on the Speed Carbon RC. Can I remove it? Yes, I can. I did it already. Scott calls this one a race day uh, insert. It's a bit thinner, less cushion in it. Not a huge difference, but I believe it's a small tweak that that changes a bit the, um, the whole thing. Midsole and many differences here. So dual density type of midsole. You had the geometric cores on your screen a bit earlier in the video. And of course, a carbon plate in the Speed Carbon RC, a Carbitex plate, which is S-shaped. -S and like Carbitex say, and I believe it's true, we, al we already had a Carbitex plate in the, where is it, Speedland SLPDX, I don't have it here. But the trailer shoe from Speedland had already a Carbitex plate. Those plates have um, a way of working that is not just one type of flex and energy return. It sort of adapts to the different pressures, the different bendings, the different forces that you put into them. And it's like a smart plate, if you will. It doesn't have any connected feature, any smart feature. That certainly will come in due time in running shoes as well. But the Carbitex plate is one nice feature in this shoe. I believe it counterbalances a bit the firmer ride and that experience that is really unique and different from, from many other shoes. By the way, for the record, I measured the Durimita score of the plate as well. It came out at 72, which is no surprise, super stiff, super hard. I even expected a higher number, but 72 is what I measured. And yeah, the, the ride of the two shoes are really, really, you know, sort of working around one feature, which is the rocker. And Scott claims that they spent 10 years working on the, on the specific geometry, specific rockers on these two shoes. The rockers are called ER2, and I don't have the, the name right now, I will, I will put it on the screen, but ER2 is the name of the technology, 10 years of research and, and development on it. It's certainly one of the most sort of natural rocker that you will find on the market, but there's a caveat to that, which is a good caveat in a way. It works really well for heel to midfoot strikers because these runners will really take advantage of that 
full rocker, full transition from heel to toe. And as a four foot, mid foot to four foot runner myself, I believe I'm not exactly the, the perfect you know, runner to enjoy that rocker. But in a, in a way, it's good that this runner works better for heel to mid foot strikers because you know 80% of, of the runners are heel to mid foot strikers. So that's also a great asset for this shoe. I believe it will work really well for those runners. Some words, some subjective feelings about the rides. The two rides are very similar. I expected a bit more energy on the racer compared to the Pursuit. The Pursuit is a bit softer, a bit more compliant, a bit more welcoming, if you will. Yeah, the, the difference is, is, you know, the, the ride is just a bit firmer here on the Speed Carbon RC and a bit, let's call it, not aggressive, but a bit more demanding. It also offers you a bit more efficiency, for sure, but it's also a bit more demanding, a bit firmer. I believe leg pounding, I haven't measured it, but wouldn't be excellent on this one. But you know, if you like, if you're a heel to midfoot striker, you like a very nice, well-designed rocker and a firmer ride, there you go. You have a very nice shoe to try at 180 euros. If you want something similar to that, but a bit softer, still with that fantastic rocker, but you don't have the, the stiffness of the plate, let's quickly compare the bend of the two shoes. Here you have it for the Pursuit, and here you don't have it, well, you, you have it on, uh, on the image, but there's no bend, no flex on this one. So if you're looking for something with a bit more four foot flex, that's still very nice geometry, but a softer, more compliant, more, let's call it casual ride, uh, you have the Pursuit. It's a bit lighter as I measured them, and it's also a bit more comfortable with that slightly more cushioned upper. So two options and 140 euros for this one. I believe the price points are really fair on the two shoes and I hope that Scott will come up with new versions for these two shoes, addressing some issues that people may have reported to them. Because I think, you know, it's just like uh, some brands like Speedland, Kraft, On Running, they have a ton of quality in the build of the shoes, a ton of research behind the scenes and they deserve some, some credit for that. I wouldn't rate these shoes as high as some other shoes I reviewed on the channel, but I have some, some hopes that Scott can come up with some very cool stuff in the future. So this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this review. Enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride, go beyond your limits, and most importantly, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.